We're going to go to a controversy that's erupted uh, in recent days in relation to uh, some very popular, long-lasting contraceptives in Australia, including Mirena and Implanton. Now, the Australian Medical Association, Michael Gannon, is concerned about recent reports uh, on the ABC, the national broadcaster, suggesting that a large number of women are suffering significant side effects, while there's no doubt that some women do have adverse reactions and adverse outcomes from using these popular contraceptions. Around a million Australian women have the Mirena uh, contraceptives, which is a long-lasting contraceptive that can last for up to five years. The AMA is concerned that these reports are unnecessarily scaring women and could lead to unwanted pregnancy. I spoke to Dr Gannon earlier this afternoon. So there's been concerns raised uh, about uh, these long-lasting contraceptives, uh, including uh, Implanton, is that uh, how you say it, and, and the Marina. Uh, are the concerns uh, or are the, the adverse reactions, if you like, widespread? Mm. Uh, we saw a disappointing story on ABC television last night that uh, didn't paint the full picture. Uh, Long-acting reversible contraception is, uh, is more convenient for women uh, and it's safer. Uh, so uh, the report referred to the more than 9,000 Implanon devices inserted in the arm that release a steady amount of hormone over three years and they referred to problems with the uh, uh, with the Marina, a brand of intrauterine device put in nearly one million Australian women. Um, they're not perfect um, uh, and they do have side effects, but the beauty of them is that they are reversible and the hormonal effects uh, um, are out of the body within 48 to 72 hours of removal and in the vast majority of circumstances that removal is uh, simple and takes either seconds or minutes. Okay, so when you say they're not perfect, for some women, uh, what sort of reactions do they have uh, to either the marina or, or the other um, treatment that actually means the doctor would say, yeah, maybe we should take that out, that's not working? Well, both devices contain a class of hormone called a progestin, and many women are familiar with the unfortunate side effects of this naturally occurring hormone. It can make you feel grumpy, it can make you feel bloated, uh, it's responsible for some of the adverse uh, effects women suffer some when they're pregnant. <laughs> Some people might be hard-pressed working out if it was it was that or something else. Might be their husband not doing the dishes. But um, you wouldn't necessarily get it removed if you're feeling grumpy. I mean, the women in this report were uh, actually complaining of far more serious uh, complaints. They were talking about uh, uncontrolled and and constant bleeding. Uh, they were talking about pain. Uh, one of the women in the report was talking about adhesions that she had. Is there any reason to believe? that those adhesions would be related uh, to the contraception that she was taking? Well, there's no doubt that a significant proportion of women will suffer side effects, and depending why an insert has been um, placed, um, you might need to consider an alternative. Uh, if but, the... but can the marina, for example, cause adhesions, or can... I'd be surprised if the implant on called in adhesion, that's sort of in your arm, would that be able to cause adhesions in your abdominal cavity or not? Uh, well, that would be a very rare side effect. Uh, overall, is it a side effect? Well, there is potential uh, with intrauterine devices being a foreign body uh, that if you uh, concurrently get a sexually transmissible infection, that could, right. could cause scarring, etc. I was confused, though, with that report because the woman that was talking about adhesions, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she had had the implant on, not, not the marina. Yeah. Look, when you put in a million devices, you're going to have a number of problems. And uh, I'm not surprised at all that, uh, uh, that they're able to find a small number of women where there's a great deal of difficulty finding the implant. Uh, um, so GPs, other uh, specialists are trained uh, to put these things in. But in a million inserts, I can promise you that there would be hundreds of women's where removal was a bit more difficult. But that's not the experience of the majority of people. Okay, the marina is kind of like a modern IUD. Now, obviously, back in the day, there was a lot of controversy uh, about those uh, in Australia. Uh, but the, the technology has, has moved on, if you like. Why do you think, uh, why do you recommend long-lasting contraceptives to women in Australia? What's the upsides of them? 
Well, the Marina device has revolutionised gynaecological practice. It's, it is the most effective form of female contraception available with a lower failure rate of being sterilised. Uh, and yet for a lot of women, they have it put in for non-contraceptive purposes. It might help them with, uh, with uh, endometriosis. It might prevent iron deficiency anemia from heavy periods. Uh, um, so it's a great choice for women who not only need contraception, um, but might be having heavy periods. But it's, it's traditionally more uh, offered to women who've had kids rather than before, isn't it? Well, I suppose one of the arguments that, uh, uh, that uh, GPs, gynaecologists, other specialists working in women's health would like to get out to the community is that these long-acting reversible contraceptives are probably a more appropriate choice for a majority of younger women who haven't had their children yet. Stories, don't like, stories like the one we saw on ABC television yesterday don't help communicate that message that in many cases they are a safer option than the combined oral contraceptive pill. Um, they are overall um, appropriately used, extremely safe. Um, and they've and they've been a an absolute bonanza for uh, for women in Australia over the past okay. 20 years. The allegation though in this report was that doctors are getting kickbacks to recommend these. What what do you say to that? Well, that's an appalling allegation. Well, it's a true, isn't it? Uh, look, it's true that industry supports um, events, and I saw reference made to sponsorship of. Um, the Royal Australian New Zealand College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists Conference. Now, I don't know if I have to disclose that I was at that conference. I didn't visit the stall. I, I don't need to know anything new about, uh, about the marina. Um, but the reality is that industry does support uh, educational conferences. I don't have a problem with that. What's really important is that the arrangements uh, like that are transparent. And if individual doctors are receiving payments uh, from industry, they should be on a public register, uh, and that should be disclosed uh, to individual patients. OK, and, but you worry about the alternative, which is unplanned pregnancy uh, or abortion, obviously? Well, the truth is, if we want to talk about the marina, is that this is part of the story about why uh, we've seen a three, nearly four-fold reduction in the rate of hysterectomy, a much bigger operation with a higher risk of complications over the last generation or so. Uh, we see loads of women who uh, avoid the the day-to-day -day drudgery of uh, being tired from iron deficiency anemia during to heavy periods. And yes, it is. It's a more effective form of contraception than, than others available. Uh, so this was a disappointing story. Uh, the satisfaction rates typical of this device are closer to 90%. Um, and if women are suffering unreasonable side effects... Uh, they can we, get it removed. They can yeah. get it removed. Just finally, on that issue of, of the cost of abortion, that's something that we've discussed on this program uh, before because it's quite an interesting debate around AU486 when it was interested, introduced in Australia, uh, the abortion pill. We were told that people were going to have um, $10 abortions, but in fact, because it's largely controlled by... Um, private providers, Murray Stopes and, and so on, the cost uh, is closer to, to you know, six, seven hundred dollars, close enough to a surgical abortion. Do you think there's anything governments need to do uh, so that women, particularly younger women or low income women, are not facing those sort of very extraordinary costs really for accessing uh, abortion, which is not legal in all states, uh, but is, uh, you know, as good as legal in, in, in most places in Australia? Yeah. Well, that's the first responsibility of government, is to give uh, uh, both uh, patients and doctors greater certainty under the law in those states uh, uh, where we haven't seen modernisation of, um, of the relevant uh, legislation. Uh, but in terms of access to care, um, it is a, a legal and appropriate form of health care. Um, it is expensive for a lot of women, and there are barriers to accessing care, uh, not just in, um, in the regions, but sometimes in the middle of our large cities. Uh, medical treatment uh, using uh, mifepristone AU486 is an appropriate choice uh, uh, for a lot of women. Um, part of the expense comes from the importance of, of following those patients up. Um, it's most important, for example, a diagnosis yeah, of... Yeah, so, so it's most important that, that you don't want to have an incomplete uh, abortion, essentially, uh, but uh, why should those women have to bear the costs of that? Uh, well, certainly, as a legitimate and important part of health care, it should be supported through the MBS. Uh, prescriptions should be supported uh, through the PBS. But uh, as for the cost of services, um, 
Um, it, best practice does require exclusion of ectopic pregnancy. Um, patients may need an ultrasound scan. Um, that, all, all that work, um, all that expertise yeah, does right. need to be funded. Yeah. All right. Thank you a lot for your time this afternoon. We appreciate it. Pleasure, sir.